These people are getting off the train from Portland, Maine for what they hope will be a great day of skiing. Hello everybody, I'm Bob Biatti. We've heard so much about the ski area here at Sunday River, Maine, where there's seven different mountains and 14 different lifts that we came all the way from Aspen, Colorado to check things out. Coming up today, a youngster from Maine whose love for skiing is so strong, even a severe handicap doesn't keep him off the snow. Also, you might join her for breakfast in the morning on CBS, and you might also run into her on the ski slopes. And what happens when great video skiing doesn't work? They call it crunch. All of this and more coming up today on Toyota Ski World. Join Bob Biatti as he travels the world of skiing each week on ESPN. From the top resorts in the U.S. to the best in Europe, it's Skiing's television magazine show. Welcome to Toyota Ski World here at Sunday River, Maine. We're on a trail called White Heat, and it is the widest, longest, steepest trail that there is on the East Coast. And it is plenty steep, and it is quite a struggle getting down. But not too long ago, we were with some people here who made it look absolutely easy. Chuck Woodford reports. We know it's wide. We know it's long. We know it's steep. But is white heat really that tough? Oh, yes, it is, especially for me. Uh, I think one of the challenges is keeping a speed at a constant level all the way down the trail, keeping the line the same. The way to do that is just constantly turn the same way all the time. Uh, it's challenging. <laughs> I like it. I don't know. It's fun. It's different. It's warm. <laughs> sure, it's warm. People work hard out here. Even the groomed area is steep. And check out these bumps. Tough sometimes. They're great in the spring when they get closer together. This time of year, they're a little far apart, and you get a little more speed in between them. You've got to keep control of your speed and keep turning. One of the challenges is the different changings, the temperatures, and during the season. The techniques are the same, but you, you can get away with more in the softer snow than you can in the harder snow, and that adds a little bit of a different challenge. So why does white heat make some skiers so happy? Uh, the challenging moguls and like just the run itself. It's just wicked hot, and you know, like really test your limits on it. Because it's a challenge, and you like to put yourself out as hard as you can and ski as hard as you can. You don't want to just take the easy stuff. Of course not. White heat is enough for anyone to meet the mogul challenge. But coming up, a young man who really knows what it's like to meet the challenge. ESPN's Toyota Ski World is being brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. By Sprint, the official telecommunication sponsor of the U.S. ski team. And by Diet Coke, just for the taste of it. It is a world of total confidence. It is Avalon. It is smooth acceleration from a powerful V6 with stability and maneuverability that goes beyond the expected for the most refined ride of any Toyota ever. Avalon, the new flagship from Toyota. Experience the tranquility. Could you take uh, a picture of us with no, Roller over there? <laughs> if you take off to the Italian town of Todi, but your camera just takes off, where'd they come? You better have Visa Gold, because there's not a camera store there that takes American Express. There's a great shot. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. Contour, a unique bottle design, as unique as the beverage it holds. So unique, it could be recognized in the dark. It worked, and it still works. With all its power, with all that it is capable of, with all its refinement, and its reputation, in the places it can take you. The Toyota 4Runner, where civilization is headed.
welcome back to Toyota Ski World. And now it's time for this week's Diet Coke skiing experience. We're looking at 13-year-old Carl Burnett from Portland, Maine, who was injured when he was five years of age in a car accident, but it certainly hasn't slowed him down a bit. Look at those great turns he's making. Carl, you look great up there. Thank you. But also, I can see that good-looking face. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Skiing's pretty good? Yeah, it's great. We just got some new snow here, and uh, so skiing's been great. I've been training with my team here and uh, getting ready for the race tomorrow. Uh, do you train right with the regular team? Yeah, I do. It really helps my skiing a lot to be able to train with the able-bodied athletes um, as well as the disabled ones. Uh, it provides a real challenge. Yeah, how do they treat you when you're out here on skis? Well, at first when I came out here, some of them, uh, I think, thought it was a little weird to have someone monoskiing on their team. But now everyone, even the little kids who I don't even know, come up to me and say, Hey, Carl, how's it going? You know, so it's, I think everybody is really acceptive of, of having me here on the team, which is great. What's the most fun you get out of uh, out skiing? Uh, I like race courses are really fun, um, especially GS, like tomorrow. I hope to have a lot of fun out on the course. Um, I just like arcing those clean turns around the gates and um, that's the, the best sensation even more than moguls or steeps or whatever tell me a little bit about your injury oh I, I was injured in a car accident when i was five years old and it left me paralyzed from about the waist down so as a result i can't walk i have a few muscles in my legs which help mono skiing um, involves a lot of hip movement and I don't have much sensation in my legs either but that doesn't really matter in the mono ski because uh, all you need is the arms trunk some hips and a lot of courage that's right <laughs> I don't really think of it as a disability it's just as they say politically correctly now it's just uh, differently challenged not disabled Okay, Kyle, what's next? Well, what's next would definitely be the U.S. Disabled Ski Team. Um, I'd like to get on that within a year or so, keep improving my technique, hopefully be in Japan in 1998 for the Paralympics. I'm sure you're going to be there. We're going to be rooting for you. You know, there are a lot of snowboarders out here. I've seen them all over the place today, all over the country, everywhere we go. You know, you almost have a snowboard there. Do you ever think you might want to get on a snowboard? Um, I'm not sure how it would work with a monoski. Um, it would certainly be an interesting thing. Snowboarders come up to me all the time and say, Hey, couldn't you put a snowboard on those? Or, where could I rent one of those? They think it's just the newest fad. They don't even realize I'm disabled sometimes. But You don't ski like you're disabled. That's the reason. Thanks. <laughs> Good luck to you. Okay, thank you very much, Bob. Uh, it's great to see a young man that's out there charging like he is. You know, when we talk about snowboarding, we're talking about a growing sport. And one of the best in the sport happens to be Tommy Moe, you know, the Olympic downhill champion's half-brother. We caught up with Tommy's half-brother, Steve Persons, in Montana. He's on the U.S. snowboarding team. He's the subject of this week's Visa Presents, the U.S. ski team. Chuck Woodford reports. This is Steve Persons winning the GS title at the U.S. snowboarding championships. This performance won Persons a place on the United States' first ever snowboarding team. I think for me, it's a really good career move because really before this, I didn't really think I was going to have a career in snowboarding at all. Look closely at the number Persons wore at June Mountain. Number eight, the same number brought luck to Lillehammer gold medalist Tommy Moe, Persons' stepbrother. He really kind of pushed my racing career because I knew that you know, he did so well that I knew that it was possible. The 24-year-old racer called Mo a friend before the two became stepbrothers. They've always shared training secrets, like kayaking. Kayaking's real good for me because it's a kind of mental thing, and you know, as far as snowboard racing is concerned, you really have to, uh, you know, keep your mental edge. Training at Big Mountain, Montana, gives persons an edge too. I like training at Big Mountain because you get different varieties of snow. It's like. Uh, we get hard snow and soft snow, and we get everything, so it makes really good training. It prepares you for all different types of courses. While Persons trains for next season's World Cup events, he's thinking even farther ahead, 
1998, when the Winter Olympics in Japan may welcome snowboarding as an event. The Olympics are uh, actually a goal of mine, so um, I'm going to really push, push for it, and hopefully I'll be there in 98. I think it would be really fun to, to watch Tommy race and then uh, have him come over and watch me race, and uh, if, if that worked out, it would be really fun in the Olympics. I guess philosophy on life is just to uh, just uh, push your own goals, and uh, no matter what anybody else is doing, I'm just, for myself, just trying to set goals, short-term goals that I can reach, that I know I can reach, and then as soon as I reach those goals, and push it for another goal that's a little bit further out there, and just keep working your way farther and farther. Lately, that philosophy seems to be working. Snowboarding certainly is attracting good athletes and fire from Montana. Skiing attracts one of television's familiar faces. Stay with us. Tired of being snowed in? A house that's too small for you might be perfect for someone else. If you're looking for results, look for Remax out in front. Don't buy or sell your home without looking at these videos. Call Bobby Matthews at Remax of Simsbury to receive a free three-day preview of buying a home, the seller's role, or pricing to sell. Learn all you need to know about buying or selling a home. There's no cost or obligation. Call 651-5661. Star and Mix have abandoned the music you like. We'd like you to give a listen to the new 96.5 TICFM. Today's Top 40. The new 96.5 TICFM. The best music on the radio without the rap. The new 96.5 TICFM. Listen. The Phoenix Open. Will you travel as far as Mickelson? Climb as high as Daly? Cross the void with Stewart? Dig as deep as Faldo and see as far as Strange? Keep walking. We all live the quest. That's why we watch. Let ESPN show us the way. The Phoenix Open. Presented by the Dial Corporation. Today at 5 Eastern. Welcome back to Toyota Ski World. Today we're in Sunday River, Maine. We can see the youngsters here in the racing program, about 80 of them right now. And they're the future U.S. ski team members. As a matter of fact, the U.S. ski team was training here just last week on their way to Europe. We hope they have a good season over there. Now, we had a chance recently to meet up with a young woman who started skiing when she was six years old. She's not a ski racer. You've seen her a lot on television, though. Her name is Paula Zahn, and she's this week's Toyota skier. Earlier this month in Stovermont, CBS This Morning host Paula Zahn helped celebrate the Olympic spirit at the second annual U.S. Ski Challenge, raising over $150,000 for Olympic athletes. She was paired with former Olympic champion Billy Kidd on the race course. Paula Zahn on the blue course side, Billy Kidd on the red. Look at them here, side by side. Paula Zahn and Billy Kidd across the finish line. Now, based on my performance today on the slope, I hate to admit how long I've been uh, skiing. I started when I was six years old. It was really quite by accident. Uh, I grew up in the Midwest, and there was this little ski area called Four Lakes that probably at that time had a, the hill had a vertical drop of maybe 200 feet. And uh, my girlfriend's father was the head of the ski patrol. And the only way any of us could afford to ski at this little place, because it was quite expensive for the area, was to fake accidents for her father, who was the head of the ski patrol. But I, I fell in love with the sport the first time I tried it. I love the sensation of speed. I love being outdoors. And uh, the only thing that, that isn't perfect in my life right now is that I only seem to be getting in a week, a week of skiing nowadays. It's really hard with my job. But uh, I'm in, in, in my glory this weekend. <laughs> I think it was a fixed race. No, you got the start. You, you know what? The big accomplishment I I didn't wipe out like I did Didn't last you feel good going out of the Here's this broadcaster's play-by-play -play of her performance. She's off to a good start now. Oh, my God, she's hit the powder, which she's been struggling with all day. Is she free skiing? Now? Yes, she's doing a little free skiing now. Lost her little ski, has to put the ski on. It's back on, and she has four more gates to go, and she finished with a flurry. You know, Paula's on skis pretty well, doesn't she? 
But you know, as far as her running some gates, maybe she needs a little bit more training like the rest of us do. Good way to do that is by racing NASTAR. NASTAR stands for National Standard Race, a ski magazine program, and it's for people of all ages and all abilities. The Harvey twins are going to give us a little tip about how you can improve your skiing by racing NASTAR. Katie Harvey. And I'm Megan Harvey, and we're from the Aspen Snowmass Ski School. You know, free skiing all over the mountain is a blast, and a great way to make that better is to challenge yourself on the mountain NASTAR course. Today, we're here with Chris Davenport from the Snowmass Race Crew. So, Chris, can you uh, tell us a little bit about how the NASTAR program works? Sure. You know, the public NASTAR course here at Snowmass is a great way for skiers of all abilities to challenge themselves against the nation's best. We get skiers from beginner to advanced come and race every day, and everyone has a great time. All right. Fantastic. And uh, about what does it cost? Well, it's $6 for adults, $3 for children. Everyone gets three runs, and we even have people who take more than that. Okay, race of 183. Your times are 26.57. It's a 34 handicap and good for a silver medal. Oh, how do we do? It's a tire. we got to go up and do it again. What a great way to challenge your friends. So get out there and try your local NASCAR course. And we'll see you next time on Ski World. Thanks. Ciao. Racing can help all of us improve our skiing. Coming up, a young woman who has improved her skiing so much, she's reached the top. And she doesn't want to quit. that just won't let you go home hungry. It's called Threat Guilds. And here you might find yourself behind a great big chicken fried steak, a mountain of red beans and rice, or even a microphone. So if you go, bring your appetite for a good time and your visa card. Because Threat Guilds might let you take the stage, but they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. In the end, it all comes down to one great play. That single decisive moment when the incredible becomes reality. Now it's time to choose the best of the greatest. The ESPY Award, given in recognition of exceptional performance. Tune into Sports Center or hook up with ESPN Net on Prodigy to cast your vote for the outstanding plays and performances of 1994. The ESPY Awards, presented by General Motors and MasterCard. This time, you make the call. Welcome back to Toyota Ski World. We're in Sunday River, Maine, one of the Northeast's favorite ski resorts, easily reached from both Portland and Boston. Board the Sunday River Silver Bullet in Portland, Maine, and within two and a half hours, you're here. At Sunday River, the snow's always terrific. Sunday River claims New England's most extensive snowmaking system and a fleet of hardworking snowcats that provide top quality grooming. Add to that seven interconnected peaks and more quads than any other ski resort, and you get fast-moving lift lines and enough snow-covered terrain for everyone. Sunday River's grown steadily for 14 years. The latest addition came this summer, when the resort completed construction on the Jordan Bowl. And more growth is on the way. Plans for the Jordan Bowl will add more terrain to Sunday River than many ski areas have in total. The resort's moving ahead off the slopes, too. The Summit Hotel and Conference Center debuted in 1992, offering ski-in, ski-out comfort with all the amenities you'd expect. And in the brand new village of Bethel Station, visitors surround themselves with all the charm New England can muster. Bethel Station is expanding, too. But Sunday River's vision for the future hasn't blocked management's view of what's important, keeping skiers happy in the present. People who come here agree, the Sunday River experience is a good one, and it keeps getting better. Thanks, Carolyn. To sum up the Sunday River ski area, this is how I see it. First of all, seven peaks, served by 14 lifts and a lot of terrain flexibility. Also, snowmaking. 
you can't get any better than this. It guarantees good skiing. Lift lines. If there is an average wait of over eight minutes at all the lifts at one time, you receive a free lift ticket. Not a bad deal. And finally, progressive management. Sunday River continues to move ahead of much of the ski resort industry. Snow making machinery here at Sunday River is really unbelievable. As a matter of fact, you can wake up in the morning after being a clear night, you might find six inches of new powder snow on the ground. Excuse me, excuse me just a second. Uh, how do you like the skiing here today? I love it. It's been fantastic. You come to Sunday River quite a bit? I come several times a year. Where are you from? I'm from Shirley, Massachusetts. Shirley, Massachusetts. Sounds like quite a big town. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> it's so small. Yeah. Well, it looks like it's been pretty nice up here. Do you do any competing? I do. I used to race in college, and I do some NASA races here at Sunday River. Oh, that's good. Uh, you know, we like now to enter the world of competition. It's this week's Sprint Competition Update. Carolyn Heldman reports. As a mogul skier, Lillehammer silver medalist Liz McIntyre is both outstanding and outspoken, especially when she talks about the U.S. ski team's board of directors. Um, I've had uh, some problems with them, and I've definitely been critical of some of their policies, but right now um, we're three World Cups into a, a 12 World Cup season, and that's 100% of my attention is focused on those. And, uh, you know, whether or not the ski team's there for me, I'm going to go out and ski my heart out. Uh, as far as personal coaches on the ski team, um, I think there's sort of a mixed policy. Alpine obviously feels it doesn't work um, for freestyle. It's been kind of ambivalent, uh, but it surely works for us. I mean, uh, Jeff Good coached Donna and I last weekend as our own personal coach, and we were one too. Um, hopefully that'll happen in World Championships, and, you know, it's what we need, so it's what we're going to pursue. McIntyre trains for the World Cup here at Winter Park. Well, uh, living here in Winter Park is great for me. Um, there are a number of reasons why. and it, I mean, I came out here about 10 years ago, and I, and I fell in love with the moguls on Mary Jane. Um, and I came back here every winter and then eventually moved here. Um, that's one aspect of it. It's great skiing. It's great training for me. Um, it's got very enthusiastic freestyle skiers here um, to, kind of, to kind of keep me motivated, keep me pumped up, um, give me an idea of why I'm doing it, and that's to have fun. A New Englander by birth, McIntyre ranks Winter Park's bump runs among the best in the world. But she does hold a special fondness for that course in Lillehammer. Lillehammer was a great place to host the Olympics. You know, it's the winter sports capital of the world, basically. I mean, they just loved it. People were into it. Um, I really enjoyed being there. They put on a great show. And when I was in the gate, um, yeah, I, I was very happy with my run. Um, it was a great opportunity for me and all the hard work that I'd, I'd done over the past years um, and especially the year prior to it really I really set my goals on the Olympics and nothing else and to have that pay off was was great. Uh, since winning the silver medal my life has changed a bit but I think I'm still the same person you know I feel the same as I was in third grade so it doesn't change that much um, you know I've gotten a dog I named her Lily and uh, Mountain biked a lot. I took a little more time off this summer. I wasn't as regimented in my training um, and just sort of kicked back and enjoyed things a little more. But it hasn't, my life hasn't changed too much. This competition update has been brought to you by Sprint, the official telecommunications provider of the U.S. ski team. Competition looks easy, doesn't it? So does extreme skiing. When we return, we'll see it from another angle. Or should I say, another position. How much do you pay for a minute of long distance? 45 cents. Oh, get out. About 60 cents. Oh, about a dollar and a half? I have no idea. I'm sure it's a lot. 85. Now Sprint introduces a whole new way to save on long distance. Every evening and all weekend long, a minute is just 10 cents. It's that simple. That looks like a dime. One minute, two minutes, three. Eat pluribus unum. Who says a dime doesn't buy you anything anymore? Call now for 10 cents a minute and get up to 100 minutes free. Contour, a unique bottle design, as unique as the beverage it holds. So unique, it could be recognized in the dark. It worked, and it still works. Slam tournament.
tournament concludes when Andre Agassi takes on Pete Sampras at the Australian Open men's final. See what's being served up down under. Tonight at 10, Advantage ESPN. And now for this Toyota Ski World update. The U.S. downhill team continues to surprise everyone in Europe on the World Cup circuit. Last week in Bengen, Switzerland in the famed Lauberhorn downhill, 26-year-old Kyle Rasmussen from Angels Camp, California, produced the best downhill finish of his life, winning the event. Not too far away in Cortina, Italy, Peekaboo Street of Sun Valley, Idaho, finished second in the first of two downhill World Cup races, two hundredths of a second behind the winner, Michaela Gerg Leitner. Two days later, she picked up time to walk away with a victory. And now, back to Bob Biatti. Welcome back to Toyota Ski World. And what do you do after a good day of skiing? You go to the Sunday River Group Pub. And I found a whole bunch of guys here from Boston. Guys, oh, are we having, I don't see many women with you. Well, it's typical for this course, but actually, nothing these, there to help you out. Sorry. I'll tell you, these guys take no prisoners. Now, I want to ask you a question. Absolutely. You know, we always see these videos with guys going down extreme skiing. They never look like they made mistakes. Do you ever think what it might look like when they actually fall down? Yeah, like us, actually. <laughs> well, I think we all know a little bit about that. Well, we have a video we want to show you, and it's called, guess what? Crunch. <laughs> That's it. Crunch. <laughs> it's by John Sandy Productions. Yeah. I want a nasty, a nasty groove. Kick it. Well, I think you'll agree the word crunch explains that video. What would you think about that? I thought it was fantastic. We love seeing skiers hurt themselves, Bob. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, Bostonians take no prisoners, do they? Which part do you like the best? Well, I'll tell you, Bob, it was reminiscent of when I try and nail my triple Lindy. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't nailed it lately yet. You know, I, see a, I see a couple of women hanging around with you guys. Why would they ever do that? I don't know. Very few. I don't know. Why not? It's the best, <laughs> it's the best question you ask yet. <laughs> Well, we've had a lot of good questions. We've also had a lot of fun here at Sunday River. That's it for Ski World for this week, folks. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Next week, we'll be in Kitzbühel, Austria. Join us then. Oh, the wisdom is reaching far beyond what you see. Host Robert Gamez takes a look at the comeback bid of four-time tour winner Steve Jones on Inside the PGA Tour, next on ESPN. With the struggle it seems, while the spirit is learning, then we rise with our dreams. ESPN's Toyota Ski World has been brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And by Diet Coke, just for the taste of it. To the left or the right, from the dark to the light, given earth, how will yearn for the sky? Oh, the wisdom is reaching far beyond what you see. And the triumph is seen.